The following is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to create and animate masks in Motion 5.1. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create a mask using Bezier control points and then how to animate it using keyframes. Let's create a star. So there's a star. This is a clip from NASA. And we'll go to here. Now I want to pick up the yellow star, so I'm going to just simply grab this clip and drag it. It's like the slip tool. Right there. Good. Okay, what I want to do is I want to create a mask that allows me to catch the sun, but not the corona. Hmm. How do I do that? If I did a, a, a rectangular mask, uh, nope, that's not going to work. I could do a circle mask, except how do I find the exact part of the circle and... Uh, too hard. Freehand, you think I'm going to draw a smooth curve? It's not going to happen. I need a different plan, and that plan is a Bezier mask. Bezier was invented by a French mathematician named Pierre Bezier, I learned that this morning, who found a way to describe shapes mathematically. He has had such a dramatic impact on computer graphics because Postscript and fonts on the Macintosh, in fact, fonts in general, are all based upon Bezier equations. They're resolution independent. That's why Illustrator is loved by so many people, is that it's able to work with vector graphics. So I'm going to create a Bezier mask. Well, the cool part is, rather than have to draw each individual line, as I did with the freehand mask, I click a starting point, I click an ending point, and I don't let go of the mouse, I just drag. And in dragging, I'm able to start to create a curve. Let me make this smaller so we can see what's going on. And grab what's called a Bezier control point and drag the control point until I start to equal the shape of my star. Let's go over to here, right mouse click on that first point, switch it from linear, meaning straight line, to smooth, which means curved, and grab this and change the shape of the Bezier curve until it perfectly aligns with the Sun. Now unlike shapes which we can have be point to point, we can draw lines with the shape tool inside motion, masks cannot have open-ended masks. It has to be a closed-end mask. So I'm going to click another point right here and click another point right there and I've now got a closed-end shape. I could select the shape, go to the inspector, say invert it, and now I see the corona, or I see the sun. Isn't that cool? Well, it'd be even cooler if I could animate this. Because as my clip plays, notice the sun zooms back. Wouldn't it be nice if I could have my mask zoom with it? And the answer is you can. I've got my masks at the beginning. Click this button right here, which turns on keyframe animation. The keyboard shortcut to do that is the letter A, for reasons that none of us understand, because in every other Macintosh application, A selects the arrow tool. Here, it turns on animation, and it's gotten me into no end of trouble trying to get stuff to work inside motion. The keyboard shortcut to select the arrow tool is the incredibly obvious and intuitive Shift-S. Don't ask me. I didn't invent it. It's just the way it is. So there's my mask right there. I'm going to go back to my Edit Points tool and drag to the very end because that's a nice smooth move. I'm going to drag this move, this point down to here. Grab this and resize it so it fits for the star there. Good and grab this point and drag over. So adjust it so it fits on the star there. A little bit too tight, I think. Yeah, right there. And now watch what happens. I start here. All right, got to drag that up and over. And now let's drag it. Yeah. 
Is that not cool? So I get over to here. Now we may need to tweak this a bit. Now that looks good. Overall. That looks good. Now we could do the same thing. We could say, just show me the opposite. Now there's a little bit of stuff leaking through there and there's a little bit of stuff leaking through there. I would probably want to play games with a couple of my keyframes, but you get the idea is that it's easy, easy, easy to, let's just do this and drag over. I can tweak my keyframes. Oh, by the way, if you hold the shift key down, the shift key allows us to move I think it's the shift key. Nope. The option key allows us to move one side of a Bezier control handle, whereas not holding the option key down moves both sides. Notice how they're both wiggling a bit. The shift key allows us to constrain the movement so it makes the shape of the curve on one side bigger or smaller, and the option key allows us to change the angle. So when I'm doing this in real life, I would go back and reset these to properly align and it would take a little bit of tweaking to get it exactly the way that you want. But this button allows us to animate a Bezier control point. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to create and animate masks inside Motion 5.1. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 136. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 800 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions.